sequence like a sequence like this. 1, 7, uh, 13, 19, so on. What's the pattern? Plus 6. Plus 6. So the pattern is add 6 to get the next number. It seems like a rule. But when I say rule, I mean something specific. And you might notice on your packet or maybe on your review that I wrote, rule means a like, formula, not the math. Okay. So when we say rule, we mean a formula. And we talked about that last time as well when we went over the, the uh, review. So we don't want a pattern. And even to find a pattern for this sequence is probably even harder than finding a formula anyway. Right? What are we adding? What are we multiplying by? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Okay. So what we need to do is figure out a way say that for the first term, the first, this being 1, how can I take 1, put it in a formula, and get 1? And how can I put 2 in a formula and get two, 8? And 3 in a formula and get 27? 4 in a formula and get 64? 5 in a formula and get 125? Yes. Cubum. Cubum. So, yeah, you take 1 and cube, you get 1. 2 cubed is 8. Two, uh, 3 cubed is 27. And so on. It works for all of the terms in this sequence, so there you go. And I'm assuming it'll work for the rest of them as well. So if you want to find the uh, 18th term, we'll take 18, we'll cube it, and that'll be the 18th term. Right? In case you don't quite understand what I mean there. If I go out to the 18th term, I don't have to find the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and work my way up to 18. I just take 18, cube it. So Tyler, what would be the 18th term? Index. The index is that under number, the sub number, that little number down there in the uh, subscript. Do you know what's called subscript? Under writing. And then if I put a number like, well, this number right here, where is this number? It'd be not the subscript, but the superscript. So it's, it's like if you use Microsoft Word and you tell it to put numbers. Write the sum using summation notation. So it's not asking you to add the numbers up, but to write it using a certain notation. What does that mean, to write it in summation notation? What's key in summation notation? Big thing that catches your eye every time. Theta. Not theta, but it is a Greek letter. Sigma. A sigma, yeah. It looks like a, an E in a little bit. Why do people name their kids after Greek letters? Got to keep going. Can't ask them that question. I don't know. I need my kids normal numbers. Okay? So sigma, sigma is the Greek letter that tells us we're going to add a bunch of numbers together. Right? And there's three more things. There's a thing that goes here, there's a thing that goes here, and there's a thing that goes here. You, it's up to you. You tell me what goes where. Yeah? I equals one goes on there. Why is that? So why is it i equals 1 and 4? Because you're going from 1 to 4. 1 to 4. Why do we do it that way? Because it makes the most sense. You know what you could do? You could say, well, instead of saying this is a sub 1, we don't, they don't say that. Let's pretend it's a sub 6. This is a sub 7. This is a sub 8. This is a sub 9. Uh, perfectly 
legal, what would this be then? It would be six, and then we'd stop at nine. Well, that'd be a silly thing to do. Right. If it's up to us, and we're getting to name the terms, why wouldn't we start at one? Right. So that's why we do that. But not the only way. We'll assume we're starting at a sub one, and we'll start with i equals one, and we'll go up to four. It just makes sense. Okay, so what goes here? Your rule. The rule that when I plug in whatever i is, it will give me the first and the second and the third and the fourth terms. So what could the rule be? So that when I plug in one, it gives me five, and when I plug in two, it gives me 12, and Adding seven. Um, yeah. Okay, that's got to be part of it. That's the pattern, though, right? The rule is the formula. We gotta, gotta make a formula that I can plug I into. Negative two plus seven. Right? Negative two. If we start at negative two and add seven, we'll get five, right? And if we start at negative two and add fourteen, we'll get to twelve, and on it goes. And instead of n, we'll use i because i is a little technicality that I wouldn't mark you off for as long as you did it correctly. But you certainly would confuse somebody if they were being really strict about the notation. Okay. This thing here, that guy there, we will be the same. Okay. So what we're saying is i will be equal to 1 first, then it'll be equal to 2, then it'll be equal to 3, and then it'll be equal to 4, and we'll stop. Make sense? And we erase these circles in the word rule, and we have zero notation. It's a way of instructing me, giving me kind of a roadmap of what terms I'm going to add together. Um, what do you think is minus two? Uh, not not negative two. Oh, wait, not minus two. Just kind of answer my question. Kind of a too small, maybe? Uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't see the negative well, part. Right? I was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, good question. Find the sum. In the summation notation is just kind of seeing if you work the other way with summation notation. And I'm just going to jump in there. Okay. I just individually plugged in each number of Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Three times. Times five is uh, twenty-five. Times three is seventy-five. Plus sixteen times three is forty-eight. Plus nine times three is seven. Plus four times three is twelve. Plus three times one is three. No. There we go. We add those all together. What do we get? Pretending that we're in sections 12.1 and 12.2, that's exactly how you should do it. The, the only thing that we know of formula for adding up is an arithmetic series. Is this an arithmetic series? No. What, what does the rule for an arithmetic series look like? Um, 2 plus or minus something uh, i. So I can just kind of generalize it with number plus number times uh, I, yeah. Or that might be an N or a K, whatever. It's kind of a variable. It looks like a number plus a number times I or N or whatever. Then it's arithmetic. Does this look like that? No, the I, the variable, is getting squared, which is very different. In fact, it's not even a geometric series. It's a, a geometric series. So, 
an exponential series? That would be a geometric series, would be exponential. Exponential would mean that there's a variable in the exponent. The i would be here, okay. not being raised to the power. Okay. On we go. So I tell you it's an arithmetic sequence, which is really important, because if I don't tell you it's an arithmetic sequence, you do not have any idea how to get from 7 to 25. Okay. But in an arithmetic sequence, the 7's here, the 25's down the line down here, how do we get there? Add something. Add something. And add something, and add something, and add something. How many times are we going to add the same thing? Six times. Six times. We're going to... Go to a sub, this is a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, a sub 7, a sub 8, a sub 9, and a sub 10 is right here. We're going to add and add and add and add and add and add six times. Well, then, like when we add all those, all those adding, they're going to be the same number, right? And in total, what do we add when we add six? What do we add to 7 to get to 25? 18. 18, which we could easily do by taking 25 minus 7. Divided so by 3. Divided by 3? Not 3. 6. 6. Did you get three. Why divide by 6? Because there's 6 spaces between 4 and 6. Take 6 steps getting there. So you need to divide it up into 6 equal pieces. So that'll tell us what we add. The exact same thing 6 times. 18 divided by 6. And that's what we call what? Division. It's got a, a letter name. R. R? D. 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 Why do we have different names? Why is it D? Difference. difference. The difference between 25 and the number that comes before it, or this number and the number that comes before that, or this number and the number that comes before that. Come which is a way we can test and see if, some, if a series or a sequence is arithmetic. Right, take a number, subtract a number before it, and if that works for every pair, it's arithmetic. We have D. I guess it uh, wouldn't hurt to mention that for an arithmetic sequence, there's a formula for finding the formula. Right? Formula for finding the rule, a rule for finding the formula. Um, think of it. What does that formula look like? A base one. Right there. A sub n equals base, base one, one plus n minus one t. It was there, there for you to use. So well, we have we have d. You can go right there. That's three. What else do we need? Work backwards from seven. Backwards from seven. We go back one, we get to a sub three. We go back again, we get to a sub two, and then a sub one. Negative two. By subtracting three, three, three. A sub one, a sub. Negative 2 plus n minus 1 times 3. That is fine. And then we can distribute the 3 if we like, which I do like. Negative 2 plus 3n minus 3. Negative, negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 plus 3. There's our rule. Finding the sum of the arithmetic series. I told you it's arithmetic. Because there's a formula to find sums of arithmetic series. Or you can look at the rule. How does the rule tell you that this is an arithmetic series? Is that? You got a number plus another number times i. Anybody remember or have in their notes or something? The So when we say these, we say a. Okay, 
So this works for the first n terms, one the first, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, up, whatever. It'll add all of those up if we know what n is, if we know what the first term is, if we know what the last term is. So do we know what n is? It's 12, we're adding up the first 12 terms. S of 12, that equals 12, n. What's the first term? 9. 9, you plug in 1, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus, plug in 12, Or you could do the math on each one from 1 to 12 and add them all up. Yeah, that would be great. That's what I did. This is much fun. It's, uh, you can do that. You get 504. But if you remember for arithmetic series, there is a formula to shorten it up. Okay, so it's, it's nice to remember that. If you don't remember that, you can write down 12 numbers and add them together. And as long as you don't make any mistakes, it'll be fine. So a sequence kind of goes on forever in like a series, does it? No. That's a good question. So there goes on forever. What's the word for goes on forever in that? Infinity. 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 So you can have an infinite sequence. It just means you never stop writing down the next term of the sequence. You just keep writing it down, keep writing down the next number, the next number, the next number. Um, that's an infinite sequence. A finite sequence would just be one where you stop at some point. But then wouldn't it be a series? Series could also be finite or infinite. Okay. A finite series would be one where you add up a fixed number of terms. Right? Add up the first 12. There is an end, it ends, it stops. If we add up this kind of a sequence forever, or this kind of a series forever, we'll never get anywhere. The sum will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? So does end. What made you what made you say that a series doesn't end? What I say a series doesn't end. So what made you say a sequence doesn't end? If if I write down a, a sequence like let's look at this one back here. That's a series. Hold on. Okay, here's a sequence. If if I stop writing the, the numbers in the sequence, it's finite. It has stopped. But you could keep going. You could. Now, here is the small, kind of silly, but important difference. If I just stop on a number, I'm telling you, the sequence is finite. It stops at the fifth term. I put in, you know what this is called? Three dots? Nope. Nope. Three a quarter? Hmm? It's got a special name. Those three dots have a name. Continuations. On an ellipse, on an ellipsis, there's those three dots. Do you notice on Microsoft Word, if you put dot, 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 and space, it like, shortens them up? All in one fell. Huh? All in fell. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, if I, if I put those three dots, it means I uh, just keep going, right? Imagine that you keep writing the sequence down. So that would be infinite, and get rid of that dot, dot, dot. And it's finite. Infinite, finite, infinite, finite. Okay. okay. So what's the difference between a series and a sequence again? Series, you're adding them up. Sequence is just a list. That's what it is. Okay. Where could you find an infinite sequence? A black hole. No. What kind of a book store? Um, can you actually find an endless list of numbers? E. The federal debt. <laughs> no, that's finite. It might be hard to figure out, but it's finite. E. E M. Pi. 
the digits of pi and the digits of e go on forever, where do they go on forever? Nowhere. Where can you find them written down forever? On the internet. Hmm? Where do they actually go on forever? The US Naval Atomic Clock. Everything in the physical universe is finite. There, there is an end to some part of it. There's even a finite number of molecules in the universe. Yeah. There's an end to the universe. There's an end. But then it just keeps going for, forever as nothing. You could fill that void, but a void is nothing. Too much philosophy. Let, let's just say it is on Earth. <laughs> okay. On Earth. It's a big place. There, nowhere will you find anything that goes on forever. Like all the grains of sand and all the beaches in all the world and even the bottom of the ocean. How many are there? An infinite number? They're infinitely being created and destroyed, so there's a limit. So is there a limitless number of them? At any time? At any given time? There's a, there's a limit there's a limitless number of numbers. The only place you'll find an infinite series of sequences is in your head. You can't actually physically do something forever. There's an end. So the difference between an infinite and a finite is just saying, me telling you to stop. Or imagine that you stop. Or imagine that you keep going. So the human brain is more sophisticated than the universe. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All right, and we're done with that, and we're on to this one. So let's get another piece of paper. Do you have any questions about any of that? Section one and section two stuff? Some of the questions are like, find D. 